When he looked at Prince Oberon, he found himself wishing he had Bronn defending him, or even better, Jamie. The Red Viper was lightly armoured, greaves, bam braces, gorget, spalder, steel codpiece. Elsewise, Oberon was clad in supple leather and flowing silks. Over his burney, he wore his scales of gleaming copper, but mail and scale together would not give him a quarter the protection of Grigor's heavy plate. With its visor removed, the prince's helm was effectively no better than a half-helm, lacking even a nasal. His round steel shield was brightly polished, and showed the sun and spear in red gold, yellow gold, white gold, and copper. Dance around him until he's so tired he can hardly lift his arm, then put him on his back. The red viper seemed to have the same notion as Bronn. But the sellsword had been blunt about the risks of such tactics. I hope to Seven Hills that you know what you're doing, Snake. A platform had been erected beside the Tower of the Hand, halfway between the two champions. That was where Lord Tywin sat with his brother Sir Kevin. King Tommen was not in evidence. For that, at least, Tyrion was grateful. Lord Tywin glanced briefly at his dwarf son, then lifted his hand. A dozen trumpeters blew a fanfare to quiet the crowd. The high septon shuffled forward in his tall crystal crown, and prayed that the Father above would help them in this judgment and that the warrior would lend his strength to the arm of the man whose cause was just. That would be me, Tyrion almost shouted, but they would only laugh, and he was sick unto death of laughter. Sir Osmond Kettleblack brought Clegane his shield, a massive thing of heavy oak, rimmed in black iron. As a mountain slid his left arm through the straps, Tyrion saw that the hounds of Clegane had been painted over. This morning Sir Gregor bore the seven-pointed star the Andals had brought to Westeros when they crossed the narrow sea to overwhelm the first men and their gods. Very pious of you, Cersei, but I doubt the guards will be impressed. There were fifty yards between them. Prince Oberon advanced quickly. Sir Gregor more ominously. The ground does not shake when he walks, Tyrion told himself. That is only my art fluttering. When the two men were ten yards apart, the Red Viper stopped and called out, have they told you who I am? Sir Gregor grunted through his breaths. Some dead man, he came on, inexorable. The Dornish man slid sideways. I am Oberon Martell, a prince of Dorn, he said, as the mountain turned to keep him in sight. Princess Elia was my sister. Who? asked Gregor again. Oberon's long spear jabbed, but Sir Gregor took the point on his shield, shoved it aside, and bowled back at the prince, his great sword flashing. The Dornishman spun away untouched. The spear darted forward. Clegane slashed at it. Martel snapped it back, then thrust again. Metal screamed on metal as the spearhead slid off the mountain's chest, slicing through the surcoat and leaving a long bright scratch on the steel beneath. Elier Martel, Princess of Dorn, the Red Viper hissed. You raped her. You murdered her. You killed her children. Sir Gregor grunted. He made a ponderous charge to hack at the Dornishman's head. Prince Oberon avoided him easily. You raped her. You murdered her. You killed her children. Did you come to talk or to fight? I came to hear you confess. The Red Viper landed a quick thrust on the mountain's belly to no effect. Gregor cut at him and missed. The long spear lanced in above his sword. Like a serpent's tongue, it flicked in and out, fainting low and landing high, jabbing at groin shield eyes. The mountain makes for a big target of the least, Tyrion thought. Prince Oberon could scarcely miss though none of his blows was penetrating Sir Gregor's heavy plate. The Dornishman kept circling, jabbing, then darting back again, forcing the bigger man to turn and turn again. Clegane is losing sight of him. The mountain's helm had a narrow eye slit, severely limiting his vision. Oberon was making good use of that, and the length of his spear and his quickness. It went on that way for what seemed a long time. Back and forth they moved across the yard, and round and round in spirals. Sir Gregor slashing at the air, while Oberon's spear struck at arm and leg twice at his temple. Gregor's big wooden shield took its share of hits as well, until a dog's head peeped out from under the star, and elsewhere the raw oak showed through. Clegane would grunt from time to time, and once Tyrion heard him mutter a curse, but otherwise he fought in sullen silence. Not Oberon Martell. You raped her, he called, fainting. You murdered her, he said, dodging a looping cut from Gregor's greatsword. You killed her children he shouted, slamming the spear point into the giant's throat, only to have it glance off the thick steel gorget with a screech. Oberon is toying with him, said Ilaria Sand. That is fool's play, thought Tyrion. The mountain is too bloody big to be any man's toy. All around the yard, the throng of spectators was creeping in toward the two combatants, edging forward inch by inch to get a better view. 
The King's Guard tried to keep them back, shoving at the Gorkas forcibly with their big white shields, but there were hundreds of Gorkas and only six of the men in white armor. You raped her! Prince Oberon parried a savage thrust with his spearhead. You murdered her! He sent the spear point at Clegane's eyes, so fast the huge man flinched back. You killed her children! The spear flickered sideways and down, scraping against a mountain's breastplate. You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! The spear was two feet longer than Sir Gregor's sword, more than enough to keep him at an awkward distance. He hacked at the shaft whenever Oberon lunged at him, trying to lop off the spearhead, but he might as well have been trying to hack the wings off a fly. You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! Gregor tried to bullrush, but Oberon skipped aside and circled around his back. You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! Be quiet! Sir Gregor seemed to be moving a little slower, and his great sword no longer rose quite so high as it had when the contest began. Shut your bloody mouth! You raped her! The prince said, moving to the right. Enough! Sir Gregor took two long strides and brought his sword down at Oberon's head. But the Dornishman backstepped once more. You murdered her! He said, Shut up! Gregor charged headlong, right at the point of the spear, which slammed into his right breast, then slid aside with a hideous steel shriek. Suddenly the mountain was close enough to strike, his huge sword flashing in a steel blur. The crowd was screaming as well. Oberon slipped the first blow and let go of the spear, useless now that Sir Gregor was inside it. The second cut the Dornishman caught on his shield. Metal met metal, with an ear-spitting clang, sending the red viper reeling. Sir Gregor followed, bellowing. He doesn't use words, he just roars like an animal, Tyrion thought. Oberon's retreat became a headlong, backward flight, mere inches ahead of the great sword as he slashed at his chest, his arms, his head. The stable was behind him. Spectators screamed and shoved at each other to get out of the way. One stumbled into Oberon's back. Sir Gregor hacked down with all his savage strength. The Red Viper threw himself sideways, rolling. The luckless table boy behind him was not so quick. As his arm rose to protect his face, Gregor's sword took it off between elbow and shoulder. Shut up! The mountain howled at the stable boy's scream, and this time he swung the blade sideways, sending the top half of the lad's head across the yard in a spray of blood and brains. Hundreds of spectators suddenly seemed to lose all interest in the guilt or innocence of Tyrion Lannister, judging by the way they pushed and shoved at each other to escape the yard. But the Red Viper of Dawn was back on his feet, his long spear in hand. Elia, he called at Sir Gregor. You raped her! You murdered her! You killed her children! Now say her name! The mountain whirled. Helm, shield, sword, surcoat, he was spattered with gore from head to heels. You talk too much, he grumbled. You make my head hurt! I will hear you say it. She was Elia of Dawn. The mountain snorted contemptuously and came on, and in that moment the sun broke through the low clouds that had hidden the sky since dawn. The sun of dawn, Tyrion told himself, but it was Gregor Clegane who moved first to put the sun at his back. This is a dim and brutal man, but he has a warrior's instincts. The red viper crouched, squinting, and sent his spear darting forward again. Sir Gregor hacked at it, but the thrust had only been a feint. Off balance, he stumbled forward a step. Prince Oberon tilted his dinted metal shield. A shaft of sunlight blazed blindingly of polished gold and copper into the narrow slit of his foe's helm. Clegane lifted his own shield against the glare. Prince Oberon's spear flashed like lightning and found the gap in the heavy plate, the joint under the arm. The point punched through mail and boiled leather. Gregor gave a choked grunt as the Dornishman twisted his spear and yanked it free. Elia, see it, Elia of Dawn. He was circling, spear poised for another thrust. See it! Tyrion had his own prayer. Fall down and die, was how it went. Damn you, fall down and die! The blood trickling from the mountain's armpit was his own now, and he must be bleeding even more heavily inside the breastplate. When he tried to take a step, one knee buckled. Tyrion thought he was going down. Prince Oberon had circled behind him. Eliar of Dawn! he shouted. Sir Gregor started to turn, but too slow and too late. The spearhead went through the back of the knee this time through the layers of chain and leather, between the plates on thigh and calf. The mountain reeled, swayed, then collapsed, face first on the ground. His huge sword went flying from his hand. Slowly, ponderously, he rolled onto his back. The Dornishman flung away his ruined shield, grasped the spear in both hands, and sought it away. Behind him, the mountain let out a groan and pushed himself onto an elbow. Oberon whirled, cat quick, and ran at his fallen foe. Elia! He screamed as he drove the spear down with the whole weight of his body behind it. The crack of the ashwood shaft snapping was almost as sweet a sound as Cersei's wail of fury, and for an instant Prince Oberon had wings. The snake has vaulted over the mountain. 
Four feet of broken spear jutted from Clegane's belly as Prince Oberon rolled, rose, and dusted himself off. He tossed aside the splintered spear and claimed his foe's greatsword. If you die before you say her name, sir, I will hunt you through all seven hells, he promised. Sir Gregor tried to rise. The broken spear had gone through him and was pinning him to the ground. He wrapped both hands about the shaft, grunting, but could not pull it out. Beneath him was a spreading pool of red. I am feeling more innocent by the instant, Tyrion told Ilaria Sand beside him. Prince Oberon moved closer. Say the name! He put his foot on the mountain's chest and raised the great sword with both hands. Whether he intended to hack off Gregor's head or shove the point through his eye slit was something Tyrion would never know. Clegane's hand shot up and grabbed the Dornishman behind the knee. The Red Viper brought down the great sword in a wild slash, but he was off balance, and the edge did no more than put another dent in the mountain's vambrace. Then the sword was forgotten, as Gregor's hand tightened and twisted, yanking the Dornishman down on top of him. They wrestled in the dust and blood, the broken spear wobbling back and forth. Tyrion saw with horror that the mountain had wrapped one huge arm around the prince, drawing him tight against his chest, like a lover. Elia of Dawn, they all heard Sir Gregor say when they were close enough to kiss, his deep voice booming within the helm. I killed her screaming whelp. He thrust his free hand into Oberon's unprotected face, pushing steel fingers into his eyes. Then I raped her. Clegane slammed his fist into the Dornishman's mouth, making splinters of his teeth. Then I smashed her fucking head in like this. As he drew back his huge fist, the blood on his gauntlet seemed to smoke in the cold dawn air. There was a sickening crunch. Ilaria Sand wailed in terror, and Tyrion's breakfast came boiling back up. He found himself on his knees, retching bacon and sausage and apple cakes, and that double helping of fried eggs cooked up with onions and fiery Dornish peppers. He never heard his father speak the words that condemned him. Perhaps no words were necessary. I put my life in the Red Viper's hands, and he dropped it. When he remembered, too late, that snakes had no hands, Tyrion began to laugh hysterically. He was halfway down the serpentine steps before he realized that the gold clerks were not taking him back to his tower room. I've been consigned to the black cells, he said. They did not bother to answer. Why waste your breath on the dead? <laughs>